use the definition of the absolute value to rewrite each of these given expressions without the absolute value bars. Now, in part A, we're given the absolute value of 5 minus the square root of 7. And then in part B, we're given the absolute value of the square root of 7 minus 5. So to get us started for both parts, let's begin by simply recalling the definition for the absolute value. So keeping our definition for the absolute value in mind, and in particular, the two cases for when x is not negative, we know that if x is not negative, then the absolute value of x is just x itself, versus when x is negative or less than zero, we know that the absolute value of x is gonna be the opposite value of x. Now, looking up at both parts, we can see that we have the square root of seven in both of these absolute value expressions. And assuming that we don't have our calculators on us, we need to come up with an approximate value for this irrational number so that we can determine which case of the absolute value definition to use. So while we cannot simplify the square root of seven, we can think about the square root of the, the next smallest and the next biggest perfect square around seven to determine an approximate value for this number. So we know that four is a perfect square and nine is a perfect square. So we can simplify this inequality and say that seven is greater than, or excuse me, the square root of seven is greater than two and less than three. So this is gonna give us an approximate idea for the value of each absolute value expression. So in part A, we want to rewrite the absolute value of five minus the square root of seven without the absolute value bars. So we can observe the following. So since we know from our inequality above that the square root of seven is less than three, and thinking about the argument of our absolute value, we can say that since the square root of seven is less than three, then five minus the square root of seven is going to be a positive value because five minus three is positive. So since we are working with a positive number, we know that our value within the absolute value expression is non-negative. And with this, we are officially ready to simplify. So we can say that the absolute value of five minus the square root of seven since that value is non-negative, this is just equal to five minus the square root of seven itself. Now what about case two or part B? Now in part B, we want to evaluate the absolute value of the square root of seven minus five. So again, thinking back to our original inequality, we can observe that since the square root of seven is less than three, then the square root of seven minus five, or three, approximately three minus five, is negative, it's gonna be less than zero. So because we are working with a negative value within the absolute value, we know this time we're working with case two. So we want the opposite value of the inside of the absolute value expression. So we can say that the absolute value of the square root of seven minus five is the opposite of that number, so minus the square root of seven minus five. And really there's nothing wrong with this answer, we can leave it as it is, or if you'd like, we can distribute the negative sign through to both terms and rewrite this as minus the square root of seven plus five. Or if you don't want the negative number to be first, we can rewrite this in the equivalent form, five minus the square root of seven. Last but not least, observe here that while part A and part B have different arguments or different inside values, we ended up with the same answer. So we're gonna explore this in a little more detail shortly, thinking about the distance between two points.